As we all know, January is the toilet bowl month for movies, but at least it's award season, so it's not that bad. Every year, my sister and I play the Oscar game. What's the Oscar game? It's easy. You just guess who's gonna win the Oscar. Now, I haven't seen all these movies, but you don't even need to see all the Oscar movies. Sometimes you just look at it and be like, oh yeah, that's gonna be an Oscar movie. So here's how you play. You pick your top two contenders, who you think is gonna win, and your understudy. You get two points if the first person you pick wins, and you get one point if the second person you pick wins. And then for the live action, animated, and documentary short, you just randomly pick one of them and you get half a point. So congratulations if you get one of those. Because no one actually seen those, they just, you just, you know, pick one. Now remember, it's not about who you want to win or who you think deserves to win. It's about who you think will win. And if we learned anything from the past, we know the one that deserves to win isn't always the winner. If you're playing the Oscar game, you gotta have an Oscar party. I'm talking jumbo shrimp, spinach dip, sparkling grape juice, you know, a party. Dress your best and shed a tear for Leo. So I'll post my full list in the description, but let me go through some highlights. For best picture, I think they're gonna give it to Spotlight. That's like the real big one that everyone's talking about. But maybe Revenant? I don't know. They might give it to Alejandro two years in a row. It's rare, but it happens. But you don't know how excited I was to see Mad Max in the nominee for Best Picture. Of course, I thought it was the best movie of the year, but didn't see that coming. Overall, pretty happy with the uh, nominees. Although they can nominate 10 movies, and I think I would have added uh, Sicario and Hateful Eight to that. Maybe Ex Machina. And just for fun, I think I would replace Bridge of Spies with Straight Outta Compton. Best Actress was a really hard one for me this year. I'm going with Kate Blanchett. She's won before. She's kind of an Academy favorite. She plays a lesbian. You know, the Academy loves stuff like that. For my runner-up, I was going between Saoirse Ronan and Brie Larson. At first I was going with Saoirse Ronan, but everyone's been talking about Brie Larson. And that's what you gotta pay attention to. Who has everyone been talking about? There's no formula for the Oscars, but there are guidelines. It's not about which one's the best. It's about which one's the most Oscar-y. Okay best actor. Is this the year? Is this the year that Leo gets his Oscar? I don't know. I'm hopeful. I put him as my number one. What the Oscar's like is a struggler. and <laughs> He struggles in this movie, but not really in the way that the Oscar's like. like. He doesn't have AIDS and he doesn't want to be a woman. Speaking of which, I don't think Eddie Redmayne's gonna get it. A lot of people are thinking, I mean, like, he's playing a woman. Jared Leto won a couple years ago for cross-dressing, but I don't think they're gonna give it to Eddie Redmayne two years in a row. Also, I hear the movie isn't very good. Typically what happens at the Oscars is they don't give it to the movie with the best thing. They give it to the best movie with the thing, so. But I got Michael Fassbender as my understudy. He's been nominated before. I think he's one of those guys that just doesn't have an Oscar yet. I hope it's not this year, because that means he takes it from Leo, but this is your year, Leo. But if Leo wins this year, I'm actually going to jump up and down and scream. And supporting actress was really tough. I'm going with Jennifer Jason Lee because, again, everyone was talking about her. The understudy is really tough too because a lot of people were talking about Alicia Vikander and the Danish girl and Rooney Mara. A lot of people were saying Rooney Mara was doing even better than Cate Blanchett. I don't know. That was one of the ones I didn't see. But I'm going with Kate Winslet because she's been nominated for. She's an Academy favorite. She could steal this one from Jennifer Jason Lee. For Best Supporting Actor, the only one they were talking about was Tom Hardy. And the only actor I like more than Leonardo is Tom Hardy. I would so love to see both of them win Best Actor. Will it happen? I don't know. It, it happened in 2014, so... Mark Rylance was a pleasant surprise. It's cool to see him on the list. I don't think he has a chance at winning, though. People were talking about Stallone getting a nomination. I didn't think he'd actually get one. It's nice to see that he got one, but again, I don't think he'll win. He got the Golden Globe, but I don't think he's bringing home that Oscar. My understudy, I'm going with Mark Ruffalo, because I heard a little people were kind of talking about him. At first I had Christian Bale, but no one was talking about Christian Bale, so I, I changed my mind. I am so happy for all the awards Mad Max is getting, and rightly deserved. Basically, I'm guessing Mad Max for every award other than Best Picture. I would be unbelievably happy to see Mad Max win. I just, I don't think it will. So Best Director, George Miller, Mad Max. He's super old, it was in the desert, it was really hard to make. I think he deserves it. But also Alejandro Inarritu had a really tough time. 
Asterix in his movie, but will they give it to him two years in a row? Will they? Best animated movie. It's pretty easy to guess, you just go with the Disney movie, it usually wins. But a lot of people were talking about Animalisa, so if Inside Out has any competition, it's that one. So let me tell you a story. I was watching Sicario, and I was loving it. I was thinking, this movie looks great. I looked at the credits at the end, it said, Roger Deakins, cinematographer. I'm like, Roger Deakins? I know that name. I looked him up, and Sicario is his 13th Oscar nominations. Do you want to know how many he's won? Zero. I thought, this is his year, and he deserves it. But then I read a thing about Revenant saying all of the lighting was natural lighting. It was just the sun and fire, and it looks great. But Emmanuel Lubezki has won twice in a row, Gravity and Birdman. Will they give him three in a row? So I got Lubezki as my number one, but if he doesn't get it, Roger Deakins deserves it. Like I said, I'm basically giving any technical award to Mad Max. Hair, makeup, production design, costumes, any of that stuff. I, I, just, I just want to win everything. So best original screenplay, I'm going with Spotlight, because again, that seems to be the favorite. It's not who does it best, it's who's the favorite. But my understudy is the one that I want to win, Ex Machina. It's a shame that Ex Machina only got two nominations. So I was looking over some of my choices and I was thinking, oh wait, I didn't pick Hateful Eight for best writing, but it's not even nominated. I mean, come on. I'd love to see Straight Outta Compton win for best writing. That is its only Oscar and it's a shame. Also, I can kind of see Inside Out sneaking in there for the win, maybe. For editing, of course I'm going with Mad Max. And then my understudy I'm putting as Star Wars. Star Wars actually got five nominations. Well done. But when I was watching Straight Outta Compton, just randomly I thought, this editing is really good. I should get a nomination. But it's not about who does it best. For best score, I'm going to go with Ennio Morricone. I think he did a great job, but also they like to give it to the old people. So uh, understudy will be John Williams. And then there's best song. So Fifty Shades of Grey is nominated for an Oscar. How did we let this happen? I had to say that I actually kind of like that song. But we cannot have Fifty Shades win an Oscar. Thankfully, Lady Gaga has a song about rape, so... Best foreign movie, I'm going with Son of Saul. That's the one I've heard of. And a lot of people have been talking about it, so... I think that's a safe bet. Although, two years ago, The Hunt was the only movie that I heard of, and it's Mads Mikkelsen. Of course he's gonna win. But no, The Great Beauty. Okay, fine. Same thing with Best Documentary, The Look of Silence. That's the one I've heard of, and that's the one people have been talking about, so. When it comes to snubs this year, there's really nothing that was that upsetting like Lego Movie last year. I mean, come on. The only ones I can really think of is Jason Mitchell as Easy e and then Samuel L. Jackson in The Hateful Eight. I mean, <laughs> how great would that have been? Also, that adds a little diversity, which has always been a problem for... Alright, so those are some of my choices. The full list will be in the description. Hopefully this year's a good one. And you can click right here to see how disappointing 2015 was. And let me know who you think is going to win. I bet most of them are going to be white. At least Matthew McConaughey doesn't have a chance of stealing it from Leo again.